A true celebrity of his time, Bobby Fischer once embarked on an extensive tour across the U.S. and Canada to give a series of simultaneous exhibitions, often playing against more than 50 strong opponents at the same time. Whenever the opportunity arose during these matches, Fischer consistently used the lolly attack, his pet line in the Italian game. Here are five of those games. In the first one, Fischer takes on Rouse. He of course starts e4 best by test, and the players enter the Italian game. Black opts for knight f6, the two knights defense, and with the knight blocking the queen, white can leap forward, attacking the f7 pawn, which is difficult to defend. Black has some aggressive alternatives here, but the main move is knight d5, obstructing the bishop's line of sight. To preserve his bishop, white captures with the pawn. While the most popular follow-up is knight a5, in all of these games, Fischer's opponent plays knight takes d5. And Fischer never replies knight takes f7, the fried liver attack. He actually swore by a different move, and one that many grandmasters believe is even better. Fischer plays d4, the lowly attack. With d4, white is opening up his bishop, protecting the knight, and trying to open the e-file when black's king is still a couple turns away from castling. By the way, white will still sacrifice his knight on f7 just a bit later. The first victim of the lowly attack chooses to capture the pawn on d4. This prompts white to castle so that his rook can quickly occupy the e-file. Black continues bishop e7, adding an attacker to the knight. Then we see knight takes f7. To avoid suffering massive material loss, black has no choice but to take with the king, self-pinning. Capitalizing on black's disarray, Fischer plays queen f3, forking the knight and the king. Now, black should either play bishop f6 or king e8, giving back the piece. White would still be better, but at least it's defensible for black. Instead, black plays king e6, trying to hold on to the material. This decision proves to be disastrous due to the open e-file. Fischer swiftly shifts his rook one square, delivering check. The king cannot move because it would hang the knight. So knight e5 blocking. Then bishop f4 piling up on the pinned piece. Bishop d6 again interferes with the queen, so bishop f6 is the only option. Fischer continues with the fancy knight c3, which shouldn't be captured as white would just take twice on e5, forcing the king up the board. Then rook e1, can't go back, would be followed by bishop takes e5, removing the defender of c3, and finally, queen takes c3, checkmate. Back to the game, black plays c6 to support his knight, and Fischer uncorks, rook takes e5. Black cannot recapture, as rook e1 would pin the bishop, and there's no way for black not to lose a ton of material. So they try king f7. This is followed by knight takes d5. Again, black must avoid recapturing, because it would open too many lines to their king. Black would have to play king f8, and queen h5 presents too many threats. For example, queen e7 trying to defend leads to this beautiful rook sacrifice, and eventually, checkmate. Instead, black plays bishop e6. Fischer just takes it. Black can't keep giving away material, so he finally recaptures. Then knight takes f6 opens a discovered check. Black goes back to his roots by not recapturing the knight, going to king e7. Then rook e1 forces king f8, and the knockout blow is queen a3. Black resigns since checkmate cannot be stopped. In the next game, Fischer squares off against Fred Grunberg, a strong player and former US Chess Federation vice president. We make our way through the Italian game before Fischer launches the lowly attack. This time, black responds with bishop e7, adding an attacker to the knight. White shows aggression by immediately sacrificing the knight on f7, forcing the king out into the wild. Fischer follows up with queen f3, unleashing a double attack. Black replies king e6 to defend, and in this case, black is not in any imminent danger since the e-file isn't completely open. White starts piling up on the pinned piece with knight c3, and it's already incredibly challenging for black to survive. There's probably only two moves that allow black to hold on. Knight takes d4, gives the piece back, but keeps material even. Knight b4 could also work, 
threatening the fork and preparing to play c6. However, in the game, black tried bishop b4, pinning the knight to the king, which ostensibly means there's one less attacker on d5. The only problem with that logic is that white can take the knight with check, and black can't recapture because even though the knight is pinned, you can't put your king into check. So black isn't really spoiled for choice in terms of king moves. He plays king d6. Fisher takes the knight, removing the defender of e5. If black recaptures immediately, then white would likely take on e5 and be comfortably up two pawns with a much safer king. Instead, black throws in bishop takes c3 before taking the bishop. This last move creates a new opportunity for white's dark squared bishop, and white deploys it to a3 with check. After king e6, Fisher could capture on c6, winning the rook, but decides that material isn't enough, choosing to castle instead so he can recruit more attacking forces. Black tries to trade queens with queen d5, but with the king in a perilous place, white keeps the queens on the board with queen h5. e4 persists, but is simply met with queen h4. g5, queen h5, and queen f5 planning to relentlessly offer queen trades. White plays f3 attempting to open lines, and black continues queen g6. Then Fisher unveils a clever combination. Queen g4 check, queen f5 blocks, and queen takes f5 finally granting black's desperate wish for a queen trade. But Fisher's true intention was to lure the king forward. Pawn takes e4 opens a discovered check, and black, knowing that Fisher with a two pawn advantage in an endgame is unstoppable, throws caution to the wind and captures on e4. Trouble ensues with rook a to e1 check. King d5 is the only move, followed by rook e5 check, prompting black's resignation due to the inevitable continuation, king c4, and rook c5 checkmate. This game is the shortest of the bunch and features Fisher encountering a challenger by the name of Redman. In response to Fisher's lowly attack, Black plays f6 with the idea of preventing knight takes f7 altogether by simply moving the pawn. White captures on e5, opening up a second attack on Black's knight. Black has the option to capture the knight on g5, but chooses to take the pawn on e5 first. Then Fisher captures Black's piece, and once again Black could take the knight, but decides to play c6 attacking White's bishop. Fisher counters with knight e6, attacking the queen and setting a trap. Black can't capture with the bishop, because that would allow White to save both pieces and be up material. In fact, there's only one way for Black to survive. It's queen e7 attacking the knight. Two pieces are under attack, and if white takes the dark squared bishop, black would first take on d5 before capturing the trapped knight later. Unfortunately for them, black fails to find this one resource and plays queen h5 instead, hoping to escape the attack on their queen by giving check. Fisher meets this with bishop d2 counterattacking. Black plays queen b6 and then resigns, realizing that white will retreat the bishop and secure the full piece advantage. In the penultimate game, Fisher's opponent is Snuske. The opening moves proceed as usual, and Black meets the lolly attack with bishop e7. The knight is attacked, so Fisher takes on f7, luring the king forward, before playing queen f3 with the double attack. Black plays king e6 defending, and white responds knight c3 targeting the pinned piece. This position may seem familiar, and that's because it is. The beginning of this game follows the second game exactly. Last time I told you that black's best move is to capture on d4, giving back the knight, but maintaining material equality. Well, in this game, black repeats the same mistake, pinning the knight to the king. Fisher wins the piece back, and then captures on c6 just like he did previously. Black also throws in the intermezzo, capturing the knight on c3 with check. After both sides recapture the pieces, Fisher finally deviates from the previous game. Instead of playing bishop a3, like he did earlier, he castles. This brings the king to safety, and the rook can soon join the attack. Now, taking on d4 would open the position, inviting trouble for black, after moves like queen g3, 
and eventually bishop g5 and rook e1. But in all honesty, black's position is already pretty miserable. They play bishop e6, and Fischer grabs the pawn on e5 with check, opening the d-file. Advancing the king would undoubtedly result in checkmate, while king e7 loses to bishop g5. So king d7, but then rook d1 is a brutal check. Black blocks with bishop d5, and white replies c4, attacking the pinned piece. Black tries rook f8, and Fischer sidesteps the attack with check. Black resigns, since they will be down far too much material. Fischer's final opponent is Jürgen Kuhn, a strong German player. As they delve into the two knights defense of the Italian game, Fischer confidently employs the lowly attack. Black's reply is f6 attacking the knight, and white captures on e5, opening a discovered attack on the black knight. Black captures on e5, understanding that despite losing the knight on d5, he can win back the piece on the next move. Once the dust has settled, Fischer castles, and upon evaluating the position, we notice that despite the material equality, White has the advantage thanks to their much safer king. With the last move, White aims to quickly seize control of the e-file, which would be a massive headache for black. So a move like bishop e7 should be played, congesting the e-file so that rook e1 isn't as powerful. Instead, black develops with bishop d7. Rook e1 follows as expected, pinning the knight. Black plays queen f6 defending and also stopping f4. Then Fischer storms in with queen h5 check. g6 is black's best try, but even then, black will eventually lose the knight and be a piece down. Instead, black blocks check with queen g6, and unfortunately for him, this completely hangs the knight on e5. So black resigns. I hope these games were both entertaining and instructive. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more chess content.